time in August. I hope it, I hope it finds you all safe and healthy. But we have an election coming up on September 1st, and Hello Reading likes to interview uh, and have conversations with candidates. And the uh, one candidate who has applied for a potential opening is uh, Mr. John Halsey, who has already served as a member of the select board for six years. So we'll be chatting with him today, or he'll be chatting with you mostly, to tell you about uh, why he's running and what he has to offer to the town of Reading uh, for you to make an informed decision on whether you uh, support his endeavor to replace uh, a former select board, a present select board member at the September 1st election. There's two ballots. Make sure you get both so your voice will be heard. And I want to say thank you, John. Thank you for coming to meet us. We're not in the studio because of virus issues and safety and health issues. So we've uh, we've uh, accommodated uh, so that we can uh, get a message out during this time. So glad you're staying safe and healthy and your family. And it's good to see you. And and uh, I think almost everybody in town knows you. You've been here for 35 years. And uh, you've been involved in a lot of town committees, so we don't need to go there. But why are you running again when you decided in the spring that uh, you weren't going to run anymore? Well, Linda, thank you for you know, arranging for us to have this chat. Um, I think the Hello Reading series has been extremely informative and valuable over the course of a number of years. And I look forward to the opportunity to talk about the issues that are facing us today. Um, that is a very fair question. A lot of people who have asked me that question, and that is, why after you announce a retirement in December, um, are you, you know, back competing um, for the opportunity to serve the town on the select board? And to me, it's a pretty clear thing. Public service was something I made a decision to do, and I've done it in many ways. Um, I. I became an elected official um, almost seven years ago, um, six and a half years ago, because I felt it was the appropriate way for me to offer my public service at that time. Um, during that six year period, we got many things accomplished. I was quite proud of the work. I will tell you the last uh, 12 to 18 months were a little challenging. Um, we seem to, you know, start to slow down in the efficiency of completing projects. However, um, I felt like it was time to give an opportunity. There were going to be two seats up. Um, I thought it was a good time for us to give the opportunity for us to serve. And we went from there. Now, specifically, why did I come back? Um, what, I did, what I saw very clearly, especially over the course of the last two months of my service, um, is that as I was exiting, and we were beyond the period of nominations, so that I couldn't make a change, um, I saw behavior that I thought was very self-serving and not in the interest of all the citizens of Reading. Particularly, the you know the the prompter to my great attention was the public safety of the town, um, and I felt as though it was being put in jeopardy. Um, that led to a series of interactions between myself as the vice chair and the chair of the, of the board at that time. Um, the chair of the board has pretty much autonomous control um, over the agenda items. I felt that it was very critical that we process through um, the selection or rejection of the town manager's candidate to fill the police chief's job. Um, unfortunately, that led to a, in what was my scheduled last meeting on February 11th, um, a rather challenging exchange between um, myself and several of the other board members, including the chair. Um, I made it clear my thoughts that we needed to move forward quickly and immediately in the interest of public safety. Um, and so to that end, ultimately, um, even though the process was delayed, in my opinion, as long as 21 weeks. Uh, we were able to move forward one week later and select the police chief. I was very happy about that. I felt it was important as I left office 
to see how the new board would develop. Fortunately, it had two brand new members. There would be uh, a new chair selected in the reorganization. And I had actually hoped for the best that the self-serving nature of what had gone on in the previous year would wash itself away. Um, sadly, I have to tell you, I've watched every single select board meeting in its entirety since I've left the board. What I find is actually more self-serving going on, less, um, less attention to the needs of the town, the business of the town, and the citizens of the town instead self-interested topics. Um, I've also seen very clearly over that period of time, um, we get to the end of three and four hour meetings and you try to, at least I do, I try to say what was accomplished. What I'm seeing is that um, the current board is kind of running in circles. Um, and I frankly think it's time for experience. It's time for interest and accountability. What I felt from the beginning was that when you took an office, you then became an employee of the citizens. You needed to be, you needed to be accountable every month of every year for your actions and activities and be open to what the citizens wanted. So, you know, to try to close the door on, you know, why I don't see that happening. Um, I feel like my experience, um, my six years of experience um, would be extremely helpful in the event that the citizens choose um, to go forward for the recall of the person in question that's on the board now. So long answer to a simple question. Um, I think it's time for us to get back to work, take care of the town business, and I think I'm an experienced person to be able to make that move forward um, over the course of the months between now and when the next election comes. So I hope that answers the question. That, that does, um, and I think uh, everyone will more clearly understand what, uh, what has led up to this point that you're running again. Um, there's a lot of um, conversation going on around town but there's a few issues that keep coming up. And I think you could, because we've done this hello already before, and your topic what that you chose to discuss was the responsibilities, <clears throat> excuse me, of select board members. And how you delineated that and made that clear was very uh, insightful. And I think that's probably would be a good thing to review again. We haven't talked about it, but I know you're, you're um, very good at off-the-cuff conversations, not to get you, because this is just about your role on the select board and yeah. how you see it should function. We have issues of open government. We have issues of improving uh, communication, um, how you supported local people. Now this is a performance issue on your part because you've already performed those services for six years. And uh, so we'll take it in little pieces. Okay. And you can talk about, let's talk about how you see the role, how important is the role, how important, you, well, you've said why you think it's important for good people to be there, and that you think you're qualified to do that, and you certainly are qualified, but people have to make a decision. So sure. why don't you start talking about how you see the role of being a select board member. Okay, I'm happy to do that. So first and foremost, um, the select board is essentially the executive branch of our town government. And they have certain very specific responsibilities and very specific limitations. Um, first and foremost, um, it is the job of any person that serves on the select board to be part of a team that respectfully um, supervises and advises uh, the town management. Um, the select board hires, fires, and, and issues contracts to whoever sits into that role. And so I think first and foremost, that's a very important um, responsibility of the board um, because the town manager is the day-to-day -day manager um, who acts on behalf of the select board, which is a volunteer group, which isn't running 
you know, the staff. It isn't dealing with the day-to-day -day operations. So I think that's really important. And how that interaction goes on is critical. It needs to be straightforward. It needs to be um, helpful, but it needs to be firm. And in fairness on that position, um, things, for example, uh, that caused me some concern are that, honestly, um, anybody who has the role of town manager needs to have supervision through a proper channel of review and feedback. And sadly, you know, what we saw, and this is, you know, part of my concern, uh, was that uh, the town manager's contract called for um, a review by September. And frankly, it didn't happen in this case until January, four or five months later. So there was not only a violation of the town manager's contract and what was owed to him morally so that he could do a better job, um, but it was a direct violation of the select board policy as stated. So first and foremost, that's important. Um, I'd like to go on, if you don't mind, Linda, with a few sure. other thoughts sure. that I have about the role. Um, a select person that's a member of the select board has certain distinct responsibilities. They are commissioners of many things. For example, um, they are the road commissioners, uh, which includes all parking issues. So it's the select board's responsibility to try to make the streets safe, try to make the streets uh, easy to travel, and to have appropriate places to park, you know, both for residents and for people soliciting um, uh, business opportunities uh, when they come to the center of town. Um, well, the select board is also the park commissioners. So it's their job and they use other committees to help them with this. I mean, it's kind of as simple as, is the maintenance going on? Is the grass being cut? Um, are the youth organizations able to properly use the recreational facilities? Are there adequate you know, with recreation opportunities within the framework of the park system. Very important. Again, very local. Um, the select board is also a liquor commissioner. That liquor commissioner not only issues licenses, it oversees licenses, it oversees enforcements of violations, and this is a very, very important um, job as as the as the actually the alcohol um, control board in within the town of Reading. Again, one of the things that um, I, I saw in the last year, um, I was in the minority when we had a pretty very serious violation that was allowing um, many young people in town who was known that they could go to a certain liquor store. Um, sadly, we took um, against my objection um, a very lenient approach instead of sending a strong message not only to the violator but also to all other establishments in town that the select board was serious in its role and responsibilities as the alcohol and liquor commissioners. Um, you know, the job of the select board is to keep the local issues running smoothly. Most important of those, in my opinion, um, is the oversight in, in coordination with the town manager of public safety. And, you know, thankfully, we have exceptional uh, police force, in my opinion. Um, fire department does just a spectacular job. There's an emergency management system that is managed by Chief Burns, that is assisted by Chief Clark. Um, and there are many other members of that that keep us safe. Dispatch is extremely important and we need to recognize them. How the EMTs are working with the EMS program and the ambulances that we provide, which is frankly not done in every town. So we have direct responsibility around the public safety. And in my opinion, we need to support them in a way that lets them do their job. Again, I refer back to the fact that we had a situation where there was a leave um, that was a you know a leave that was unavoidable. 
Um, we had a deputy chief step in, but the time came when the former chief resigned um, and retired. And it took us over 21 weeks to appoint uh, a permanent chief to that position. We went through a process, probably larger than it needed to be, but the town manager was very conscientious about trying to be inclusive and be responsive. Um, despite his efforts, in my opinion, there was unnecessary interference and delay. That happened especially because our one job in that hire is to accept or reject the town manager's decision. The charter is very specific about this. And it's my opinion that that part of the responsibilities of public safety were put in a jeopardous situation. The morale of our police force was clear in the February 11th meeting that they wanted leadership. Um, the delays were unconscionable in my opinion. So Linda, those are the things that I see as the responsibility um, of government. And I'm happy to, you know, kind of move on from there in some more specific areas, but in a general way, that's the way, that's the way I see the responsibilities of the select board. That, that was a good way to highlight that. I think I wrote down, uh, let's see, five, six, or seven uh, different specific things that you said, which are good to remind people because sometimes people want to complain to the select board and it's not, that they're not responsible for that particular thing. So this gives people more specific information. Um, how has the, um, there's a word used a lot about transparency, but I, I believe it's actually called open government. How do you feel about, um, I know part of, we had scheduling issues because you're not a, a, a public official now, but you still have a lot of responsibilities in your personal life. How open do you feel the select board should be? How should their response be with the community? How, should they minimize public citizens' input, which has been going on because of Zoom? That's, that's affected a lot of people negatively, especially if the meeting's on, on RCTV. So how do you feel about what's going on, and do you think you can affect a more positive change for more resident participation, more citizens' input, more opportunity for people to feel like it really is their town government that's responsive to their needs in some of the roles that you play here. Why don't you talk a little bit yeah. about that? So the, uh, the idea of open government, which is sometimes called transparency, and you know, in my opinion, that might be, that's a good descriptive word, but sometimes gets overused. And so, you know, the idea that the the executive branch, the elected executive branch, keep a wide open, not only communication, um, but also, you know, a window into the work um, for all citizens to look at, I think is really mission critical. I mentioned to you earlier, Linda, that um, it's my opinion that accountability is kind of a watchword of every elected official, especially those um, that are elected to the executive branch. Um, that accountability is not only focused on the three months prior to your next election. It, it should be focused every month of every year that you serve. Now, how is that accomplished? One of the things that um, I think is really important is that um, public comment be heard. Now, you can't solve every problem in public comment, but now you find things that the citizens are interested in. You find their reaction to certain things that are coming before the board. And to hamper that in any way, I think is, first of all, not productive. Um, I'm, you know, I'm going to hesitate to use any more critical terms than that right now, even though I think what we've experienced especially in the last few months. I know that there's challenges due to the COVID situation. I realize that Zoom is not the, necessarily the optimal way of communicating back and forth. But honestly speaking, um, I don't think it should truncate in any way the public comment section of 
what goes on in the select board meeting. If I were a member of the select board, um, I would make you know an official statement during a meeting um, similar to what I've shared um, with the board on a private in a, in a private way as a private citizen. Um, I know that the Zoom format lends itself to anyone speaking. Um, I get that you need to be able to control that. The chair needs to be able to control um, length and um, content to a certain extent. And I don't mean denying freedom of speech, but we try to be not personal. We try to be not political during the public comment period. What we found instead is we went through um, probably six weeks of meetings where the only way that the public could be heard was to send an email during a very specific period of time. And then um, people on the board were to read those and some of them got read and some of them didn't. This some is not, didn't get included in the package. Well, either. they did, but you know, you know, honestly speaking, I think that this has been a, been a serious shortfall. So when you want to talk about transparency and open government, we're not seeing that at the level that it should be exercised, in my opinion. Furthermore, one of the ways that the public can understand what's actually going on in a select board meeting, particularly given the challenges of, of COVID, the opportunity to not come in person, I understand all that. And I do understand that, you know, we need to be highly sensitive to those things. However, this, the next way that someone as a citizen can find out what happened is obviously if they can review a tape, that's great, but that's, we've had some challenges with that too. The recent retreat was not broadcast live. Um, I understand that there was a recording made through a Zoom program. Um, and so I, I think that that's a bit of a problem. Here's the other issue. The next, the next way that a citizen understands what his elected, his or her elected officials are doing is through a review of the minutes. And I must say, since, since we have entered into the most recent group of uh, members of the select board and the current chair, the issue of minutes has been Three somewhat meetings. unbelievable. Three meetings they have to discuss. So here's where we are. We talk about minutes. We can't approve them. Um, we talk about, you know, excising parts of the minutes. We talk about a summary program. Um, at the moment, there are eight sets of minutes that have not been approved. So from a transparency standpoint, this creates a real problem. And I think actually even one member um, of the select board, should I be given that, that privilege and honor, um, can drive home the importance of having accurate minutes that have been approved, that they're not revisionist in the way that they're, you know, finalized and approved, and that they're available in a timely way um, to all of the citizens. These are fundamental steps to the transparency of open government. And honestly, this happening. has been a challenge for a very long time. Linda. And so I hope that answers the question of how I look at the transparency of government. Um, so what else is on your list, my friend? Okay, um, let me see. We have, um, The reason for a lack of decision making in select board meetings has been referred to as an inadequate process or they need more information in order to make a decision. Um, what is the ownership of on the select board member to be up to speed, to speak to the town manager if they have questions? Why aren't things getting done in a timely way? Every time we seem to watch a meeting, it's like, well, we can't discuss this. We have to do this. So we have to ask somebody else about this because we're really, if we make a decision the wrong way, we're going to hear about it. Well, that's what accountability is. But 
something is lacking in the not coming to meetings prepared to actually do the business. Can you talk about the timeliness of being able to move forward and putting it on the thing to discuss and possibly vote instead of saying, oh, well, we can't vote this, like we couldn't vote for the police chief because we didn't put it on the agenda that we might vote for it. It's like, just put it on the same all the time and go, you know, do it. Well, um, this is a really important point, and I do have some thoughts on it that I think, you know, will at least share with those people that watch this how I look at things. I think, you know, my background, um, I spent my professional life really as an operations officer. Um, and the job of an operations person is to evaluate a situation, um, think about all the resources to solve the situation, and then act in a timely and efficient way. So my background and training is that. So if we take a look at what's actually been happening, um, here's what I can tell you only from a personal standpoint, my observations and, you know, my behaviors when I, when I did serve on the select board, um, I felt this is now just for me. I don't question anybody else's timing or decision when they want to do this in their life. Um, my business life was busy, um, beyond belief, a lot of travel. Um, I have a lot of um, outside activities that, you know, demanded also my attention and my travel, whether it be, you know, Boy Scouts or youth organizations that I supported. But here's what I knew, that if I was going to do this job right, I had watched it for a long time because I was a community activist in this town for 25 years before I became a member of the select board. The, the obligation, in my opinion, is to spend whatever time is necessary to understand what is coming before you in the next agenda. Um, and the creation of the agenda is mission critical to completing a project. So, you know, for starters, the agenda needs to be one that is tight, but not overfilled. If more meetings are necessary, fine, but let's accomplish what we put on the agenda and let's create an agenda that each and every person that's on the select board can fully vet between Thursday when it comes out and Tuesday when the discussion comes up for solution. So let's take an example. Um, you know, and I'm so distressed um, at the select board's activity around a, you know, a, a COVID related, business related, citizen related situation that was 100% their responsibility. Um, recently, we saw, you know, a business owner who was trying to open their business in a, in a productive way. They had an idea, that idea was going to come before the select board. And that was to, you know, put up a tent um, to be able to adhere to, you know, COVID regulations and get their business going. Great, great idea. Now, the select board, when they know that that's coming in front of them as highway slash parking commissioners and alcohol commissioners, since mm -hmm. this was, you know, the reissuance of a new alcohol license, it, it was incumbent on them. Matter of fact, it was incumbent on them within the framework of their own policy to advise, communicate to all interested parties, proper public hearing with due notice to all who might be involved. That is not what happened. I mean, the reality is that there were many business owners that did not, were not aware of what was going to be happening next. And it wasn't that anybody was trying to you know, cause anybody grief, any of their neighboring businesses. Here's what happened. Because of the failings, in my opinion, of the select board, what we ended up with was business owners who otherwise coexist quite nicely, um, at odds publicly on social media. I mean, it's the saddest thing you could imagine that that would happen when we all need to be pulling together in difficult times. 
it further polarized the community. I mean, it polarized the community in a very negative way. And it also created certain hazards for those among our population who needed to be in a certain place, um, have a handicap sticker, needed to have access. So when you look at something like that, it's all in the framework of doing your homework. That all could have been avoided with a proper first step. So for example, it could have been explained, you know, and offered, so, and frankly, I think town staff, you know, was trying to offer good suggestions. Um, and honestly, what I saw in the ensuing meetings, when it became clear that their homework hadn't been done to start with, the town staff was essentially blamed when, in fact, that was not the case. They were trying to work closely. And honestly, if this had been done right from the beginning, we probably would have found the establishment with the tent with a little separate opportunity to put as many seats in a different arrangement that would have been timely uh, so that that person could have properly rented or purchased equipment that was no longer available later. Um, it would have not impacted any of the fire codes. Um, all of these things are the responsibility of the select board in their roles that I described earlier. And what we found instead was not only a direct violation of their own, um, their own um, policy, and when that was pointed out, if you review one of the steps that the select board took was to change that policy to put the responsibility onto the town staff. These are things that, in my opinion, are unconscionable in the execution of the duty. You have to do the homework. It's a lot of work, I will tell you that. Um, and, you know, honestly, you know, maybe I was looking forward in retirement to not putting in that extra 15 or 20 hours a week of reading, calling, communicating, um, my, throughout the entire time that I was a member of the select board, my phone number, my email, um, was wide open to the town. My, if you, if you checked, I was in a different coffee shop, probably three to four or five days a week, um, with people who wanted help, with people who were mad, with, with people who thanked me, it was all over the place. And that was okay because honestly, the select board has a responsibility to every citizen in town. They have a responsibility to the health, welfare, and safety of the citizens and the town. There is no room for selected individual agendas that don't fit into the scope of what it is a, a you know, a, an executive committee, a select board should be doing on behalf of the citizens. I hope that that answers that for you. Yeah, that was, that was, I think that was good. And the fact that you used uh, actual si situation helps explain. Um, that was a good example to use because I think that was the thing on Facebook that got the most signatures. It came close to 400 signatures. So that, that was, well, um, it was a very, it was very polarizing, sad. Yeah, the, you know, we had citizens upset with each other. We had businesses upset with each other. And here's the worst thing. The worst thing is in the most important time for each business affected, right. um, it became a distraction and more difficult and has left one business in a serious financial strait, is from what I read, um, because of a decision to go forward in one direction and then yeah. you know, a revocation that's actually coming up very shortly. We'll be seeing you know, that tent come down and Sadly, that's, you know, that's been a, you know, a boon to her, to, to that, to that lady's business. Um, sadly, it's challenged other businesses. So it's an unfortunate circumstance. Um, the timing of this election is in line with some of the national events that have been going on and the cry for social justice issues mm -hmm. to be yeah. resolved. And that was not specifically on the things that you had mentioned as responsibility, because some people see that as personal political 
action. But there is a responsibility for select boards in how they interact with members of the community, with businesses, um, for the social aspects and responsibilities of being listened to and being heard and have their concerns heard. But I think you brought up a point, there is another committee that has been asked to address some of those issues. And I know there's a long history of it that I don't think we need to go into now, but talk about that, Certainly. How, that how that fits in. Well, look, I mean, let's talk in general about the fact that you have five people who have a massive responsibility in town. And, and running stuff, yeah. However, the beauty of the way the charter is written is that committees can be formed and have been um, by the Board of Selectmen. Um, the Select Board has installed many committees whose responsibility it is to adjudicate certain issues that, you know, um, are very important. For example, if it's the CPDC, um, they need to worry about, you know, construction that's going on. If it's the ZBA, they need to worry about what kind of um, changes might need to be made and how that gets approved. If it's conservation, you know, how are we treating our environment? Being socially responsible, you know, is a broad brush. And I think socially being responsible is part of the board's responsibilities. And I think that they accomplish it a certain way. They accomplish it by respecting and empowering certain committees to do certain things, advise them, act on their behalf. And so, for example, you know, in the in the current environment, you know, this special election happens to be coming in a red hot political environment um, on many, many hot button topics. But we have to really, if we're thinking about the board of select, uh, the select board, what we need to think about is what's important to 01867. What is it that the select board can do through its extended committees. So for example, um, the Human Rights Advisory Committee, often called HRAC, um, was formed. And it had certain responsibilities to keep the, the board informed of issues, of incidences, um, to work closely with the public safety, you know, organization, including the chief, He's or, the, yeah, or the deputy yeah. chief, who who has been highly interactive in both roles as deputy chief and chief on social issues, human rights issues. Yes, we have the responsibility to create as as good an environment as we can within the framework of what a local municipality can do. I mean, the idea of extending. Um, the reach into grander social issues at state, federal, and you know international levels, frankly, is not inside the purview. Um, however, what is is a active group of advisory committees which do exist, and if more is needed, then it is incumbent on the on the board to look at that. Currently. Um, there is a move to, um, and it's under the banner of the ad hoc committee. I was going to bring that up. Okay, so yeah. it's it's so there is a group that has been empowered, um, and frankly, you know, while I was on the select board, I understood that there was there was a group of people that wanted a further, deeper discussion. And you know what? If you're going to represent all the citizens, then you need to allow that discussion to go on. And so there was a proposal made, um, and the name of the committee was the ad hoc committee, to look at um, the roles, responsibilities of, of HRAC um, as it existed. Um, was there more we could do within the framework of Reading? Um, were there people that we wanted to hear from who might not necessarily be Reading residents, certainly, no problem with that. And so <clears throat> this committee was formed to take a look at these things and then report back. Um, 
that has taken on its own different life. As a matter of fact, within the framework of that, you know, which included several members of the select board, um, at least two at a time since its inception, there's been certain liberties taken, for example, in appointing voting members of that of that committee who are not residents. Not residents. Yeah. So, you know, look, do I think that there's value in input? Absolutely. Do I think it's exceptionally important to bring in voices to be heard to help in the decision making process? Absolutely. Um, however, we do have a charter and the charter is very clear about committees, boards, and commissions within the jurisdiction of Reading that all of those voting members of any any such committee be Reading residents. It, the charter couldn't be more clear about that. You know, frankly, there were liberties taken around that uh, with that committee. Um, and then the further liberties seem to, you know, take on, I go back to the minutes. You know, minutes not being provided in a timely way. Yeah, um, six how, months, the first meeting. So, you know, and Linda, I know you've looked at this. I mean, these are issues that are of concern. Now, how that's, you know, and then the committee is, you know, now seeking, even though it was empowered and created by the select board, it's looking to break away to another elected body. Um, it's unclear to me because the minutes are not as current as they as I would like them to be for my me to be able to follow. Um, there hasn't been um, recordings of the meetings. There hasn't been. Yeah, they didn't you know, want me. So well, these are things that all comes back to all of the things we've been talking about: transparency, um, open government, um, <coughs> all citizens being represented, and bringing voices in who could be helpful who aren't necessarily decision makers with a vote. So for me, yes, to your point, the the country is in many ways on fire around certain, certain social issues. Should we be tone deaf to that? No. Should we try to work in the framework of what we have? Yes. Um, can we improve it? I believe there's always room for improvement. Um, what I what I struggle with is the polarization that's been going on within local, you know, committees. Uh, demands, for example, being made that are honestly a little bit frightening. I mean, so for example, there was a recent bylaw committee meeting um, where the bylaw committee felt there wasn't clarity on this issue of residents, and they wanted to clarify it. Now, honestly, from what I understand and looking at the packet, there were 50, 60, 80 emails um, advising from a citizen standpoint um, that they felt the charter was just fine and didn't need to have it reopened, um, that it was clear as it clear could be. Um, those were, frankly, in the last, I watched a recording of that meeting um, uh, frankly, those were not mentioned and those were somewhat ignored uh, by the chair and the committee. A little bit of a problem for me, again, back to open government and transparency. Now, uh, there was a, a Reading resident that was given the floor. That Reading resident has served on boards and committees, both in, a, in an appointed and elected way, um, who uh, read a statement um, in defense of exceptions, um, exceptions to the residency rule. Um, I felt that that was a suggestion that the, you know, charter be somewhat ignored. I'm not, I can't, I can't speak to the person's purpose. Let me give the benefit of the doubt and say that that, um, that, that statement was a strong suggestion to the bylaw committee that they relook at the charter. Mm -hmm. The next person that was given the floor in that meeting um, was a non-resident. And that resident certainly had a, you know, a vested interest in town. Um, that resident has had students in town through a program that I think is a fabulous program, the, the Metco program. Um, 
that non-resident was very direct and insistent in, 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 in those remarks that the charter was wrong. It needed to be changed. It needed to be changed and now. Called names for that. So, you know, and, you know, when, when citizens were asked, who were in attendance, um, what they thought and they voiced their opinion, um, that non-resident um, actually, you know, called the thoughts that came out as being ignorant. I thought it was highly inappropriate. I'm surprised. My point is this, to, it's a long answer to a pretty simple question. We do have responsibility to our citizens that this is a safe, um, socially just place, that opportunities are present, that when you know violations of human rights are occurring, they're instantly brought to the forefront, that the proper channels, the committees, and the public safety that we have become engaged. I think that's 100% correct. Well, oftentimes they are legal issues as well that require well, certain. Well, of course, issues. and they need to step in. And when that happens, we have a very efficient police force to take care of that. I think it's also really important on this issue um, to say that we need to work on those things that are important in our town. And I think that we need to work inside the charter and we need to follow the 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 policies of how we run our government. And honestly, um, if charter changes are appropriate, then they have to go through due process. Um, and all people need to be heard. People not need not to be called names, even though this is somewhat of a um, emotional, some emotional issues are coming up. That's got to be, I think, managed and controlled in a, in a, in a quiet, calm, way um, and try to try to let incorporate all the citizens input so that we get to good answers on the other end and always protect our citizens so it's, it's a very important thing so I hope that that speaks to the issue I mean we could talk for hours about that topic but I think that that gives anybody that's watching this a sense of how I look at it and how I would endeavor um, as part of the um, select board to move us to completion in that regard. Um, because some of these things have, ling again, lingered on and on. We have to get resolution of things. The town business is, somebody said to me not long ago that they're looking at the town business like a Ferris wheel. You know, you get on the ride and it goes round and round, but it doesn't get anywhere. Um, and honestly, it's hard for me to disagree. disagree with that. I had a few other things on my list, but you covered them in some of your other explanations, so we don't need to go over those again. So you can do your appeal and ask people to vote for you, and uh, we'll be done. I will. I, so, you know, I guess to pull it all together, I think that we're in a situation that needs adjustment. And I think that, you know, people were well-intentioned. I'm not suggesting that everybody that's on the select board is, you know, has nefarious intent. However, I do believe that there are certain things that cause almost 2,400 citizens to rise up and use the charter to create a recall for accountability now not at election time six months from now, but accountability now. Well, it um, started early. Well, yeah. so to finish that, um, the goal was, honestly, to get that done in quick order. Um, if you followed the normal course of business, this probably would have been done at least by last June for a variety of reasons, challenges, and and demands for public hearings, okay, um, it found its way to here. So here we are. So I guess what I'm saying to anybody that's watching this, I feel that the charter was followed with a responsible recall process um, upon evaluation of the reason for the recall. I think it's appropriate. Um, I support the recall at this time. 
And should the recall be successful, um, I would very much enjoy the honor of your vote um, to let me be the replacement to fill the vacancy that would occur. And all that will happen on September 1st. And I ask for your support in that regard. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for sharing your views. Thank you for your service in the past. And um, we hope we'll see a familiar face back on the board. Thank you for watching Hello Ready. Stay safe. Stay cool and comfortable this summer. Enjoy the rest of it. See you at the polls on September 1st. Thank you for watching, and now we'll say goodbye till the next time. <laughs>